Hi there. I hope this video finds you well. On this day, I decided to take myself on a solo hike. I've been incredibly busy with work this holiday season and felt myself really craving some time to relax and reconnect. Normally I go hiking with our dogs or my partner Dylan, but I decided to leave the dogs at home this time. It felt really nice, dare I say amazing, to simply be and appreciate my surroundings without any additional worries or distractions. And as for Dylan, well, he's been gone for almost 20 days on a work trip. He has to do this occasionally, and while I never miss him less, I have developed some healthy coping skills on how to manage solo, at least for a while. A few of you expressed interest in how I avoid loneliness while being alone, so I thought I would share a few of my tips in this video. This leads me to my first tip, spending time outside. This task is accomplished a lot more easily in warmer weather than cold, but as the Norwegian saying goes, there is no such thing as bad weather, only bad clothing. And besides, I think the fall and winter months hold a beauty that the spring and summer just cannot capture. They remind us to slow down, take a deep breath, and know that even if things get gloomy, the clouds will eventually roll away. When I'm by myself in nature, I don't really feel alone at all. If anything, I feel more connected to this earth and all her elements that are easily forgotten when I spend way too much time indoors or scrolling on my phone. I feel a deep sense of true belonging when I'm outside. My never-ending to-do list seems to float away with the breeze. The silence encourages me to pause and appreciate not only the larger breathtaking beauty, but the smaller, more intricate details I might miss if I was walking by in conversation. It's pretty wonderful, and I can honestly say I've never spent time outdoors that I've regretted. It usually doesn't snow that much uh, where I live, but it snowed two days ago. We've kind of had a cold front and it's been so magical. Most of the snow at our house melted with the rain because the next day was pretty warm, but I knew this place was at a higher elevation, so I was really excited to come out here, and I was hoping there was snow, and I was pleasantly surprised, or pleasantly confirmed. I have been rationing my last like quarter cup of coffee, because uh, I knew I'd really want to savor and enjoy it in this moment. Wow, look how red my hands are. Because I also packed a snack, which is actually the sponsor of today's video, Lenny and Larry's. I'm really excited to partner with them. If you're familiar with the brand, they make protein cookies, which taste amazing, and they're vegan. But they actually came out with these new protein bars, and they're the perfect snack to have on the go. I've really been loving the chocolate almond sea salt flavor. It's like the perfect size to just stash in your purse, your car, or your backpack, but it actually keeps me really satiated and full for a long time. There's 12 grams of protein. And the best thing about it is that there are actual cookie pieces of their cookies in the bars too. So it's just extra fun, you know, makes it seem more special. They're like the perfect size, right? So I wanna show you the texture. You see those cookie crumbles? They are so good. And then there's like actual chunks of stuff in it too. I feel like the bars themselves are pretty soft and chewy, um, but I think the chunks and the cookie textures make it a lot more interesting and satisfying too. Mmm, a bit into a cookie chunk. I don't think this is the right lens, but I think I can zoom in. Look at that. How good is that? Oh, I need to pair it with my coffee too. Oh my gosh, this is so satisfying. This is honestly so nice right now. Just completes the perfect moment. Lenny and Larry's actually gave me a discount code to share with you guys too. So you can use code Caitlin20 for 20% off your order. I'll put the link in the description of this video. So be sure to check it out. They're honestly a great anytime snack. I've been having them 
for dessert some nights. Oh, and I forgot to mention earlier, they're also gluten-free. So if you're gluten-free, you can enjoy the deliciousness too. I have left my house again. I am about to go into the hardware store and uh, run some errands. But before I begin, I wanted to tell you about my second tip for being alone. And that would be to find a sense of adventure every day or as much as possible. Now I know not every day is adventurous. You might not be going outside every day. You might not be doing something fun every day, but I do think that there is an opportunity to find enjoyable moments or something adventurous in all of it so for example i'm running errands i live pretty far from the store um so i just play my favorite playlist or i play a podcast while i'm driving and i have fun with it i dance and sing in the car i don't care if anyone's watching me even if your drive is boring i feel like you can do something fun like set a timer see how fast you can get all your errands done so you can get back home or maybe make a pit stop at your favorite thrift store or spend an extra few dollars and buy yourself some flowers or a special treat i think that finding some way to be a little adventurous, doing something a little bit out of the ordinary every time or whenever possible is a great way to just, you know, make life a little more fun and interesting. I'm actually about to go to two different hardware stores because I am sort of wrapping up uh, like a DIY project in our house and then I have to go do some grocery shopping. Before I go in, I need to show you how awesome is this vest I got for $9 at the thrift store. It's, it's really big, but it's really cozy, and I love it because it's not just like Christmas themed, so I can wear it all winter long. Uh, it's officially maize in here. So I'm gonna go home. <laughs> I know my last tip to combat loneliness was to create or find adventure, but I also think that life is meaningful when we find beauty in the everyday simplicity as well, which is why my next tip is to create rituals. For me, I love making myself a nice cup of herbal tea in the afternoon. I take a few minutes of break time from any screens, and I just love the process of making it and watching the little dried tea leaves dance in the water. It's honestly very soothing and meditative for me. If tea isn't your thing though, that's totally okay. There are probably a million other ways you can find a small way to treat yourself or develop a healthy habit that you look forward to every day. For me, it serves as something to sort of propel my day and get through it on the harder ones. Hello. It's been a while. Um, I let the dogs play outside and Lily rolled in something dead. So I had to give her a shower. And then I just did a little bit of work and I just heated up some dinner. It's a vegan mushroom stew and I made some of my crispy tempeh in my air fryer and added that in for some extra protein. I actually don't have this recipe for you all yet. It's coming in early 2022, so stay tuned for that because this is honestly so good. It's like pot roast flavors, but obviously vegan, and the red wine just makes it taste amazing. I'm hot as frick though. I don't know if you can even see the steam, but I'm like giving myself a facial right now. So I'm gonna set this aside, grab some water, and be a thought. <laughs> I thought it would be a good time to talk to you about tip number four, which honestly I think has been the hardest one for me, and that is to connect with other humans. 
Dylan has been gone for a decent amount of December and he did the similar thing last year. Sometimes he just has to travel for his work. Um, this year it's been a little better because I've been employing my tips that you see throughout this video. But last year it was really hard for me. Honestly, he's my best friend and I love living with him and I talk to him all the time. So when he left, instead of being like, oh, well, like, let me just go hang out with this other friend. I was like, oh, well, he's gone. So I'll just be here by myself. And that had a really negative effect on my mental health. I was definitely more anxious and I felt very depressed. I didn't have like clinical depression, but like all I wanted to do was just like watch Netflix, scroll social media, etc. Even when I was talking to him occasionally. Um, we are better about connecting now though because I realize how important it is for me and also therapy has helped me with other coping mechanisms. I do wanna say that as well. But connecting with other people I have realized is so important. Like as an introvert, I love being alone. Do not get me wrong. I love some quality me time. As you can tell from this video, I'm like thriving. I feel energized. I am alone. It's great, but it's great for a certain period of time. And ultimately, while I do like having alone time, I personally believe that like one of the main points of our human existence is to connect and interact with other people. And what's the point of living a life if you're not sharing it with someone else? Even if you just want to watch Netflix or scroll social media, make an effort to actually talk to people. And with the times currently and just life, you know, sometimes it can't be in person. Um, so like, for example, I actually just got off the phone with Dylan. We tried to FaceTime every single day and we tried to kind of skip the small talk like, oh, how's the weather, blah, blah, blah. And like actually talk about stuff that matters or just joke and goof off and really get like a more intimate conversation going, which I also think is key. But I will also say that a virtual conversation is nowhere the same as an in-person one. Um, for me, at least I just feel like when you're hanging out with someone in person, the energy is so different. Um, and I feel like more fulfilled. Like when I FaceTime Dylan, like as an introvert, I'm like, cool. That was cool. Like I like my measured dose of people, but I don't really feel like as exhausted as like when I'm hanging out with someone, I'm not exhausted in like a bad way, but you know, it's like, you're just not, I can tell based on like my energy stores that it doesn't have the same effect on me. And so I also make a point to reach out to friends, ask them if they want to hang out, which is also challenging for me. And if you need to hear this, it's okay to reach out to your friends and ask them to hang out because I need to hear that sometimes. I sometimes have a false perception in my head that people don't want to hang out with me because they're not asking me to do things, but I'm realizing that I'm not asking people to do things either. So make sure you ask people and I'm sure most of the time they're your friends. They're going to say yes if they're free. Before I started making YouTube videos, I would watch a lot of YouTube in um, college when I didn't have very many friends because it felt easy. Like I was kind of making a virtual friend because I got to get to know someone, I got to talk to them, and I still watch other people's YouTube videos and in my mind I'm like, oh yeah, we're friends, even though they have no idea who I am. And it's kind of the magic of the internet, you know? It can connect people and bring them together. But that being said, to me, it's like a half friendship because now that I'm on the other side, I can tell you, I mean, I genuinely care about you and hope that you're doing okay, but I also have no idea who you are and you have a perception of me of what I am showing to the internet that kind of feels like human interaction, but I'm gonna tell you at the end of the day, it's not. And even just DMing someone or texting someone or watching someone else's social media, it's like a half thing because you're getting to know their perception online, not their full person and either they're not responding or if they do respond, there's like a time lag kind of in between it. So it's not like a real genuine human interaction. Whereas like FaceTime would kind of be like the middle step and hanging out in person with someone to me is like the full human experience, if that makes sense. I've definitely had like philosophical long winded talks about this with my best friend, uh, Meg. And I know I could talk longer, but that, that's all I'm gonna say. Hopefully you pertain some nuggets of wisdom from that. But I still have one more tip. First, I'm going to eat my stew though. I will link the tempeh recipe below. I'm gonna just check out my blog. 
It'll be up by the end of the first week of January. If you want to get the stew recipe. It's like one of those things where it's like, it looks brown. But it's packed with veggies. The broth is so like rich and velvety and luxurious. And it tastes amazing. Okay, clearly I cannot talk and eat at the same time. So I'll see you later. So as I mentioned in my last tip, it's really easy to just use technology to sort of solve your loneliness. But my last tip is to actually use your hands because I feel like the more senses we involved, the more present we are in the current moment. Today I decided to use my hands and make a delicious evening treat of some homemade chocolate cookies. But I also love to spend time journaling, doodling, painting, making something, usually doing something artistic, but without judgment. Obviously not all of us are called to be skilled artists, but I have to say it can still be fun if you bring a childlike sense of creativity to it. Well, um, I made Pinch of Yum's very best chocolate cookies. Um, because I made them vegan, I used a flax egg. And I, ahead of time, cut the recipe by four. So I divided everything. Um, but I was using grams, and I think I accidentally wrote the same weight for the cocoa powder and the flour. So there should probably be... 80 more grams of flour in my cookies. <laughs> so I messed them up and they smell delicious. Um, but I think I essentially just made molten chocolate. I mean, it's definitely safe to eat and I'm not gonna waste the ingredients. I'm glad I only cooked three cookies because I could probably mix more flour in later. It might not be perfect, but all right. I'm really excited to try these because there was cardamom in them, which is my favorite spice. Um, I think I just made like warm chocolate pudding. Very chewy. Also, the flavor's pretty good. I definitely prefer to uh, cook and not bake, but this is honestly my personal error. I think the flax there would work if you added the correct amount of flour, but I'm not stopping eating it, so. So that's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. And if you have any other tips on being alone or like coping with being alone, I would love to hear them in the comments below. And if you want some foolproof cookie flavor, don't forget to check out the Lenny and Larry's cookie fried bars, chocolate almond sea salt. I mean, there's chocolate in it. There's sea salt in it. It was delicious and I didn't have to mess anything up. I forgot to add flour. <laughs> so if you want to check them out, you can use code Caitlin 20. You have a few other flavors too. So click the link. They're all real delicious. I've tried them all. And you know, maybe next time I should just stick to warming one of these up instead of trying to do math when it's late at night and I just really want a cookie. I hope you all are well. And if you're having a rough day, I hope you do something to make yourself feel a little better because you are loved and you deserve to be loved. And that's pretty much all I have to say. So I look forward to virtually seeing you in the next video. Dave just said bye too, so hope you appreciated that. <laughs> bye.